you got rub it up subs, it's Black Metal Werewolf making a brand new video for you this week. And today's subject, we're going to be talking about something that I haven't really noticed in heavy metal in quite some time. And that is, where has the mystery gone? Now some of you are probably asking yourself, what the hell does that mean? What does mystery have to do with heavy metal? Well you see, when I was a little kid, I used to hear all these weird stories from my dad, uncles, and brothers about these scary metalheads doing all this weird shit. For example, Ozzy Osbourne biting the head off a bat. Alice Cooper getting his head cut off on stage, Gene Simmons being an actual demon that breathes fire, and King Diamond living in a big scary castle. And it kind of got me thinking that you don't really hear these kinds of stories anymore. Of course, a lot of those stories turned out to be fake. Uh, if they weren't fake, they were either horribly embellished to the point of ridiculousness. But I still wonder, how come you don't really hear these kinds of stories in heavy metal anymore? One of the reasons we might not hear these stories as commonly as we used to is because maybe the genre of metal has just outgrew that phase. See, back in the day of Black Sabbath and Judas Priest, heavy metal wasn't as big of a global phenomenon as it is now, so you may have needed a weird, dark, scary story to get you attention. And for a lot of bands, it actually worked quite well. When you say Ozzy Osbourne, one of the first things you come in mind is the guy who bit the head off a bat. So it's not that the stories didn't work, it's maybe just that like heavy metal is so widespread now that you don't need a weird, scary story to get attention. If you have a new band, you don't need to make up a thing that you're a bunch of cannibals or murderers or any, anything to get noticed. All you have to really do is put it on YouTube, gain a following on a social media site like Bandcamp, Facebook, Instagram, something like that, and then you can get noticed. So maybe these stories don't exist anymore is because we just don't need them anymore. Another reason these stories might not be going around so commonly anymore is because of the internet. Of course, we all have the internet right at our fingertips. Unlimited information right there whenever we want it. And that can make for rumors to spread very quickly, regardless if they're true. But it can also mean that these uh, rumors get debunked very quickly too. Usually when information gets out on the internet, it might go viral very quick, but if it's bullshit, it usually gets debunked very quick too. So it can be hard for these stories to actually take footing when there's someone ready to debunk it right away. For example, if there's a band of people claiming to be cannibals, all it takes is someone with a smartphone to take a video of them saying, oh, we're just fucking around, and then it goes viral, and then the whole mystique and the whole thing is gone. So what's the point of even starting a story, a fake story, if it's going to be debunked in less than a week? I think another reason why these stories don't spread anymore is because the audience itself has grown past that point of actually believing them. A lot of people hear these ridiculous stories and, one, either realize they're bullshit right away, without even need to do internet research, or they just think they're tacky and, and pointless. For example, if I like a band, I like their music. I don't need a scary story to go along with it. A scary story might interest me in checking them out, but if they don't make legitimately good music, I'm not actually going to enjoy listening to their music. A scary story does not make up for shitty music, and most people realize that, and they're not just going to buy into a band because they have a weird scary story to go along with it. And finally, I think one of the main reasons this kind of stuff doesn't happen anymore is because people realize scary stories sometimes do a lot more harm than good. For example, Ozzy Osbourne biting the head off a bat. Back in the day, that was a really big fucking shocker, and I'm willing to bet that there were some animal rights activists on his ass because of it. But can you imagine if that fucking happened today? If someone went on stage and bit the head off of a live bat, every fucking social media activist on this planet would jump on that person like a bitch in heat. There would be billboards with their face on it, people wishing him death threats, it would be fucking everywhere and this poor bastard would have nothing to say about it. He would just get dropped immediately from his record label. He would be fucked. So there's no doubt about it that sometimes a scary story can do a fuck ton more harm than good, regardless if it's true or not. But now I want to get your guys' opinion on all of this. Do you think weird scary stories in heavy metal are a good thing or a bad thing? Do you think they're just as prevalent today as they used to be? Leave me a comment letting me know what you thought of today's video. Now, like a lot of my past videos, I either do an album recommendation or album warning, and today's recommendation is Blind Guardian The Forgotten Tales. Blind Guardian is one of my favorite bands, and honestly, you should check out all of their albums because they're just awesome, but this one in particular because it has a lot of really cool covers on it. For example, they do a cover of Judas Priest's Beyond the Realms of Death and Dio's Don't Talk to Strangers. They also have some ones you might not expect. They do a cover of Mr. Sandman and a cover of Surfin' USA. Regardless, this album is fantastic, and I really think you should check it out. So that's it for today's video. If you like what you saw, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave me a comment letting me know what you thought of today's video. Check out some of my past videos and share it with a few of your friends while you're at it. 
If you want to keep up with me on a more daily basis, you can follow me on Facebook and on Instagram. I also have a PO box open. All that info is down in the description. I also have a handful of the patches left, so if you'd like your very own, just click right over here. There's also a link in the description. Overall, thank you very much for watching, guys. And don't forget to stay brutal.